Hello, I'm Philip Stoughton. I am at IPC Apex 2020 and I'm joined by Juan Arango and Harold Eppinger from Co Young for this Co Young special of That Scoop Show. Guys, thanks for joining me. I wanted to start with kind of a bit of an open question just to get the ball rolling. We're just kicking off 2020. Everybody's talking about 2020 vision. What do you see as the biggest challenge for the industry and what do you see as the big op biggest opportunity for the industry? Maybe I'll start with you, Juan, sure. since, it's, since it's your home turf. All right. Uh, so uh, how we see it is obviously any election year, it's very uncertain and normally second half uh, investments stop. So between the economy and the election, that's, that's a challenge that we'll just have to see how it plays out. Okay. As uncertainty. Uh, uncertainty. There, nothing for sure. The only sure thing is we don't know that. Yeah. But uh, uh, I came from the mounter world, and mounter second half, they stop investment. Okay. So I told Dr. Ko that in 2016, yeah. and it was the best third and fourth quarter in our history, so okay. I missed. Yeah. So and, and he said, I hope you miss like that again. <laughs> Keep missing, keep missing. I think uncertainty is a really interesting interesting challenge because I actually think it's a reality of the industry and we're just going through a completely unexpected supply chain disruption. We came into January thinking, okay, we've got, we've got Lunar New Year to deal with. We plan for that, that's predictable, but it's still a disruption. We immediately moved from that to this totally unpredictable situation which we have no real, still no visibility on, still no end. And it's not the first time it's happened. We've had Zars, we had Fukushima, we've had various different things before. Disruption's a reality, isn't it, Harold? I would agree. We have we struggled last year with the uncertainty of the Brexit in Europe. Uh, it's sorted out, and it's not sorted out. It's yeah. and it's executed, yeah, but still there's a transition period, which is, let me say, yeah, uh, still a challenge for everybody. Uh, I can say for us was UK this year a great uh, area to make business and uh, unforeseen but of course the uncertainness just on this example is clear uh, we see uh, some difficulties in the economy in Europe because the, the trade impact the, the Chinese trade war combined now with a little bit refocusing on Europe um, it's an uncertainness and this is the challenge for us because we have highly very well valuable new products in the portfolio and it's a double challenge if you have a good good market it's easy just to, to, to bring something in and everybody's jumping on so there are some limited budgets there are some some it's more tougher ways to, to, to uh, release the budget but I think we can offer to our customers the good solutions to be competitive, be more competitive by using these new innovative products we release. Yeah, and when you look at those challenges, and we talk about those challenges of uncertainty and disruption, that's clearly a challenge for us, but it is without doubt a challenge for our, our customers, and the solution for them is to have greater visibility, greater agility, a more robust process. And, you know, robust and agility don't always go together, but somehow, somehow we've got to, we've got to achieve that. We've got to create lean supply chains that we can move around. And having intelligence from the lines and solid data and reliable data that gives us visibility down through the line is a key part of that. Oh, it, absolutely. That's something that uh, Ko Young uh, provides as a value add to our customers, the fact that we have such good, strong data that uh, helps them improve their process. Uh, w one of the drivers for us the last couple of years has been replacing older technology because w as you get more efficient, you can't live in the 2D world. You got to go to the 3D world. And that's something that uh, we expect in 2020 to continue because they have to be you know, much uh, leaner and with 2D, they're not. Harold, when you look at opportunities, what, what sectors do you think are going are gonna to create opportunities? The automotive industry is really interesting because it's kind of, it's had a little bit of a quiet step, but there's still so much going on in terms of technology. We have nearly every industrial automation, everything which is in, in, a, in a kind of optimization process is our uh, good customers in Europe. We have military, we have aerospace, we have medical as a big improvement, but it's also the technology which is linked somehow to automotive. It's not longer the automotive itself, but you have 
new style of entertainment in the car. You have uh, audio system, you have more TVs in the system. There's a lot of, of, of potential going on for us uh, with, the, with the latest art of technology. It's, it's, it's what you never expected to have in a car. It's, it becomes now environment. On the other hand, especially for Europe, we have areas um, where really uh, it's starting to, to bring in uh, fancy technology. When, when you look at the telecom market, the telecom market was landline. Uh, new areas in North Africa, they don't go for landline mobile, they go for mobile and that means the coverage is not given there. So it's, it's also a, a driving factor. We are focused always on the high-tech nations, but there's developing nations and this becomes a new market for us. That's for Europe is the challenge to expand around Europe and yeah. to deliver this high-tech in production, but also as for end user yeah. that they can afford it. Yeah, those those markets I think are really fascinating, and and you know we've seen examples of it before. So for example, when we look at telecoms in China, most people's first um, telephone was a smartphone, which for us is insane because we. You know, yeah, we did that we, thing where we dialed with our style, finger. Yeah. You remember yeah, that? Yeah, I, I remember, you remember well. that. We remember that. <laughs> we remember that. Um, but we went through all those all those different phases. And, and as you say, when they look at putting infrastructure in in places like Africa, there's a lot of off-grid activity. There's a lot of off-grid electricity. There's a lot of other stuff. So that does that does create create all kinds of new opportunity. What about in the Americas? Which which markets? particularly excite you at the so, moment? Uh, we're expecting this year to continue, but last year uh, we had a, a great uptick in Mill Arrow. Okay. Uh, and usually, depending on who's in office, you see the shift. But Mill Arrow and Industrial were the biggest. Uh, we always lived on automotive, but as you know, it's, it's kind of stalled a little. But Mill Arrow and, and Industrial has been uh, very good. And you mentioned earlier the um, the election year. How much impact does that have here in the U.S.? It, does it is it just slow decisions down? Do people a waiting game? Because I think I know what's going to happen. But <laughs> do, do people delay their decisions? They, because they, of they delay their decisions, and because the mounter is a bigger investment, they their business really suffers. Yeah. Ours not as bad, okay. because with us it's more quality than uh, you know throughput. Yeah. Yeah. So they can delay. Uh, getting additional capacity if they don't need it, yeah. so they'll just get exactly what they need. Yeah. That drive for quality is really important, isn't it, Harold? With most of the industries that we're talking about now have become high reliability uh, industries. We're seeing more going on in in medical, with medical robotics, with implantables, all those kind of things. These are all mission critical parts. It's, it feels to me like now we don't have high rail sectors and low rail sectors, everything has to be much higher reliability. I think over the, the period of years we, we established the measurement technology as a, a fundamental expectation in the electronics, but what the last two years happened is that the people start to realize the power of the data. So from just the investment in hardware it becomes into the software solution, the, the, the smart factory everybody's talking about. but. Utilizing this inside the company is now the trend to save money and to secure the quality of the product and to maintain a very high level. So after the acceptance of the measurement technology, it's now a trend to really dive into the process and optimize one by one process step from the printing process, optimizing the, 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 the pick and place processes to to shorten the bandwidth, to be yeah. really focused on there's only one uh, expert quality, a high level quality, a reliable quality. And yeah. as you mentioned, medical and aeronautics Every is always sense. more sensitive, but it's not like this. It's re it's reflecting all industries, yeah. the goal. Yeah. the goal. Particularly if you're an EMS company that's playing in those areas. So intelligence, data, all that becomes very important. We're in San Diego, you've got Kira, is it? Your research people here. I guess you guys have been hanging out there and playing with the new toys over there the last few days. <laughs> What's going on there? Uh, they continue to grow. They uh, at, uh, about six months ago, uh, maybe a year, they doubled the space. Mm -hmm. So they're sitting on uh, 11,000 square feet, and they are our AI engine for uh, improving our process. That's what uh, the backbone of our auto programming of yeah. our K-Smart uh, suite. So it, they're they're going good, very good stuff. 
And is this one of the first times you visited them, Harold, or do you get to No, we are regular in, in contact regular. because uh, uh, these people need the feedback from, 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 from the industry, from our customers. And especially the team is with, visiting us in Europe very often, mm -hmm. talking to our key people, especially the, the big players. They, they all would like to see how the vendors are utilizing the latest technology because everybody realizes now that it's not just the coding, it's to utilize these AI engines into the, the, the real world and to, to take a benefit out, that, yeah. that's important and that is not working proper if you sit in your office yeah. and do some coding and fancy stuff. No, they have to face the reality and they like it, by the way. So Most they... don't have industry experience. They're just great programmers. Yeah. So the, one of the things that we try to do is expose them and yeah. we've taken them to local customers here yeah. so they can see what they're doing, what impact it has on, on real life. Yeah, that makes perfect sense because you know, you're not going to find AI guys that have got a whole bunch of industry experience because we haven't used it before, but AI gives us a, a great opportunity to manage the complexity of the data we've got. I just want to switch gears for a minute and talk a little bit about Co Young because what I... I kind of get a sense that you guys are uh, both friends and competitors. So you know, friends. it's all friend, or maybe just, <laughs> maybe just, maybe just competitors. So, 2019's over. Who won that one? We did. <laughs> we both won. You both. But he is a little ahead. <laughs> and I guess the biggest winner is the customers. They did good out of it. I so, would say yes. There seems, there seems to be like there seems to be a very strong culture both in Europe but in in, in the Americas also. I you know I visit your team in Mexico regularly and I've got to know those guys really well. I spend time with your customers and and with quite a lot of your uh, sales guys, and it, there just seems to be a consistent culture and, and ethics across across the whole business. Does that come from the uh, culture of Dr. Co in, in Korea or is it something that you've developed? Is it something you have to work very hard to do? Three, I think you have, there are multiple aspects. A strong leader in the business and a visionary is helping a lot to really create the extra mile in innovation in, in, in latest technology and it's, it's, it's a challenge of course because um, it's a dynamic process and you just cannot lean back and enjoy what you have but on the other hand you can rely on the future and I think this is this is this is what what we realize sometimes uh, we have a project in Europe which uh, generates uh, new features new 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 benefits mm. and it can immediately roll out to US and another other aspect in US is rolling out back to Europe but we have common common uh, customer profiles, common interests, uh, high labor costs and all these kind of things are, are impacting our business and if we have the right answers it fits to multiple markets. We cannot compete with China, we cannot co with, with our colleagues, they are always ahead. So if you, are, you ask who wins? If you're fighting for sil the silver number medal. wise, yeah. yeah. But uh, it's still a team. Yeah. And this is, I think, the power of the company expanding the product range but also the territories to, to be present and to utilize the, yeah, it's, it's personal driven, it's company driven, it's the, 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 the driving seat of Dr. Cole. Yeah, and, and actually I, the term you use of not leaning back is, is really interesting because everybody I've met in, in the teams in Europe really leans in. You know, when there's a situation, they lean in and they seem to really enjoy doing it. You know, everybody I meet on the team seems to feel really good about, about wearing that Ko Young badge. So Ko Young has a culture, and I attribute it to Dr. Ko, that this is a family. And we bring that to our branches, uh, that we are family. And uh, this is something that uh, in previous uh, jobs, uh, the way we take care of our team is different than yeah. other companies yeah. and they re you know they recognize that yeah. so and like Harold said earlier we have very similar market yeah. one of the things that we have as an advantage is that Harold developed things first yeah. so we've been able to uh, take That's advantage nice. of some of the things that he did yeah. so I constantly say to him thank you Harold thank you
You capitalise uh, on Harold uh, Smart. Uh, thank you. It's the first time that I hear it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. So that either means he's not saying it, or maybe Harold's just not listening. But but no, That's I. could happen. Yeah. But but I do sense that's there and I do sense that there's that there's that strong family connection and you're the two you know the two the two granddaddies of the uh, of of the regions and that and that seems to that seems to work strongly last question we um, talk a lot about connectivity and about the digital transformation the phrase I'm starting to hear with customers with OEMs and EMS alike is digital dividend when are we going to see the digital dividend and what how can we associate some value with the um, with the clear investment we've got to make in digital transformation. Is that something you hear from, from your customers? Are they more ROI driven now? It's, it's hard to say. Everybody understands now there is a, a, a transition period and it's, it's reflecting the business model. It's, the, it's reflecting in, uh, how investments are justified in the past. It was the machine and a little environment, a little programming. You have clear cost of ownership and that was the goal. Uh, today, the the software part, the software packages, it's not longer to maintain a machine. It's it's, it's to, to to provide workshops to understanding the process, understanding, and to utilizing the machine and the software. So, the way of thinking that a customer has to change. It's our responsibility to support these changes because not everybody has the experience at the customer side. We we have to develop the mindset, and the industry is conservative, so it's not. Yes, we go for it. So it's you have to to, yeah. to one by one, step by step, but very clear. It's clear for everybody. There is a change. There is a different business model. There is a different way of thinking, and it's related that the machine becomes a sensor, not just a machine to do a job, and the sensor delivers a lot of data, and this has to be utilized, and not only just in our world, the communication with partners in the pick and place, in the, in, in the, in the printer world, in the oven world, becomes absolutely necessary. It's not longer one man show. Yeah. Yeah. So collaboration becomes yeah, collaboration key is the key. Yeah. From Dr. Cole, the uh, order, we could say, is you play nice with everybody yeah. and uh, I think that that's uh, a strength of ours that uh, obviously inspection equipment we're not going to dictate what kind yeah. of printer what kind of mounter or any of that so uh, by being able to capture all the data and improve things it makes the the entire process much better yeah. Yeah. And that makes sense. And that, that's where you're going to add the most value isn't it it's not just in this one area it's actually taking that data, making actionable intelligence from it and actually shifting the needle in terms of the performance. It's been great to see you guys playing nice with each other on the booth in two successive shows and, and you know, um, you, you, it makes the booth feel like a much more global activity and I think that's really important. So I, I, I hope I continue to see Harold at these American shows and um, He's Juan, always at, invited. Juan at the European shows, I think it's hugely <laughs> valuable. I'm not always invited. <laughs> <laughs> no, I there you go. So a little bit more, a little bit more saying please and thank you, and maybe maybe come on over whenever you like. Maybe that's, one day that's, you'll hear when I say it. I, I, yeah, I think he's. I think he's listening, thank gentlemen. Thanks for stopping by. Always an thanks absolute pleasure thank to you. chat. Thank you. Thank you.